Tensions with Iran escalating. A report that the Trump administration made preparations for strikes on Iran last night in retaliation for the downing of a U.S. drone, but then called off the operation. We bring in Gil Barndollar, Defense Priorities Fellow and former Marine Captain, as well as Phil Flynn, a senior market analyst at Price Futures Group and a Fox Business contributor. Uh, Gil, good morning. Why the about face? Well, I think uh, the president is, you know, has, has been pretty consistent the last last few days and, and uh, has, has seemed to have some real reticence about about the full-blown war with Iran, about, about launching into real military action, absent a, a greater provocation than what we've seen so far. Uh, Phil, we, we also saw an about face a little bit on the price of oil on that report. You know, we really did. And yeah. I, I think that what we're seeing from that is that the market is concerned about what's going to happen in this part of the world and this is a very important choke point for oil it could have a major impact on the global economy and i think president trump you know even though we pull back from a military strike doesn't mean that the united states isn't going to act somehow he might just do it smarter uh, and more effectively and by doing so uh, reduce the tensions of a conflict that could actually have a bad impact on the global economy what is really, Phil, moving the price of oil now? Is it what's going on in Iran, or is it real this trade global demand issue? Yeah, it, it, it's a combination of everything. I, I don't think you can just throw out the Iran situation. You know, even though the U.S. is the biggest producer in the world right now, it still is a global commodity. It's still going to have an impact. But there's a lot of other things going on here right now. You know, just a couple of weeks ago, we were telling the world that the U.S. is going into a recession, the world's going into a recession, and everybody was doom and gloom about U.S.-China trade deal. It wasn't going to get done, and everybody was getting really bearish on demand. What happened? Prices went down demand spiked up now it looks like we could get a u.s china demand and what's interesting now is that here you have the federal reserve talking about cutting interest rates next month then of course you've got europe cutting interest rates china adding stimulus to the system to react to a slowdown that may not happen that's going to be very explosive for oil demand and i think the trade is starting to get that yeah and gil it feels like everything is kind of at this boiling point we have the g20 next week we're waiting Waiting on what the U.S. response to Iran will be. What are some of our options for retaliation here? Well, I think there, you know, we can respond in a more calibrated way. As Phil said, there are there are options that aren't kinetic, that aren't military options. Like what? Whether we we talk about cyber, uh, we can talk about, you know, reacting to Iranian proxies in lieu of actual Iranian forces. Um, there are things we can do inside the country uh, in terms of stirring dissent and other options. There are a lot of sort of clandestine, there's economic levers, there's information levers, uh, and other things we can do in the region short of actually launching strikes on Iranian forces and, and you know, the escalation that will fall from that. Gil, is it necessary that we respond, though? Because if we don't respond, does that send the wrong message to other adversaries, Russia, North Korea, even China? Well, I think sometimes that that's idea of American credibility it gets used to drive us uh, down paths we'd rather not go. You know, this, this idea that we have to constantly display strength. People are under no illusions about American strength uh, and, and even American resolve as well. Um, so I think responding to a, a, you know, a calibrated provocation uh, and, and, and overdoing it, um, a disproportionate response I think is not going to Im impress people right. necessarily. That New York Times article, mm -hmm. which first reported that uh, we were preparing this attack, this retaliatory strike, and then pulled back at the last minute, I found it interesting that no government official said, you know what, don't hold this report, you know, don't, don't go forward with this report. A and the message that that sends that, w what is that message essentially that we, uh, we, wanna, we wanna send, but of course the market and certainly the oil market is looking at all of this. I'll let you wrap it up here with us, Phil. I, yeah, I, I think so, too. But I also think it shows the strength of President Donald Trump. He has a lot of hawks in his, his administration that's probably recommending a strike. He held back. It shows you that he's still in control. Got it. Phil, Gil, thank you very much. And look at that. Your name's Ryan. Thank you. <laughs> Happy Friday, gentlemen.